Is it finally time to get more constructive on the airline stocks? Despite low fuel prices and strong consumer, the airlines have been struggling for most of the year. Some of that is due to Boeing 737 MAX catastrophe. Some of it's due to tough labor negotiations. And some of it comes down to competition. But even so, I mean, these have been especially hard hit. Take American Airlines. With a stock that's down nearly 50% from its highs in January 2018, yesterday American did something pretty interesting. Put in mixed quarters, uh, let's say a small top line miss, a decent bottom line beat, and management cut their full year earnings forecast. Guess what? Instead of going down, the stock actually rallied 4%. And by the way, another 4.9% today. You know when a stock runs on not so hot numbers, what that is? That's called a bottom. Plus, American told a great story on the conference call. After more than a decade of colossal capital spending, first on the integration of U.S. Airways, and then on buying scores of new planes, the company can now get away with spending, a, let's say, a lot less, start to delever that balance sheet. So could the stock have more to run? Let's take a closer look with Doug Parker. He's the chairman and CEO of American Airlines. Learn more about the quarter and where his company's headed. Mr. Parker, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Good to have see a you, seat. Man. Good to see you. Uh, I was so heartened on the call because you're solving labor problems, which you said is a must. Right. You're talking about urgency in making the shareholder, uh, let's say, do, make much more money. Right. But you're also saying that the because of the end of the big spend, now you can start returning, deliver, maybe even buy back stock. It's the right moment. It is the right moment. Uh, look, you know, we, we, we've had to invest mm-hmm. and, you know, we merged two airlines that hadn't been invested in for a long time. Uh, we had to go get a we had to go modernize our fleet. Um, we merged these airlines in 2013. Over six years, we spent 30, 31 billion dollars in CapEx um, for an airline our size, even our size. That's a, that's never been done before. But, uh, it, it, but so but we had to do it. So but, now and now it's behind us, though. Uh, we now have the youngest fleet in the business. We now we don't have those needs. Um, and it falls off pretty precipitously. So after averaging $5 billion a year in CapEx for the last six years, it falls off to, to around three and a half next year, about $2 billion the year after that. What that means is even if we don't grow our earnings in the next two years, which, by the way, that would be a horrible miss for us. Right. We, 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 we certainly believe we can grow our earnings in the next two years. But just for, for an analysis, keep the earnings flat. Okay, uh, but we'll, we'll have $5.5 billion in free cash flow. No, there is an elephant in the room, though. Yeah. And the elephant in the room is, is that you say, Boeing shareholders should bear the cost of Boeing's failures, not American Airlines shareholders. And you said it could be $540 million pre-tax that they could owe you. Do they have the ability to even pay it? The, that's, for them to, that's for them to figure out. Um, they look, owe it, look, right? They owe it. Of I do. do. Right. That's our view. Right. Um, you know, again, you know, we're a customer. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they haven't provided the service that uh, they were that they were to provide their customers. They 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 know that. Um, and the, the reality is, uh, this the we've already borne uh, all sorts of damages to our customers, to our team, uh, and to our shareholders. So certainly, the shareholder piece um, should be borne by the Boeing shareholders, not the American well, Airlines. What happens shareholders. when you say that to them? Do they say, "Hey, listen, you'll give us a chance," or that doesn't seem right, or? Are they just saying, yes, you are a customer and the customer is always right, which you and I know is what they should be saying. Yeah. And again, they haven't said they haven't said we're not right. OK. Um, right. So what, what, what they've said is we need to talk. Uh, we've, we've had preliminary negotiations. They're hard to have final nego- negotiations right. until you know what the real damages are. Right. And we don't know what the real damages are until the aircraft is back flying again. So that's what's most important, of okay. course. Um, but I do feel good about the fact that once we when, once we are we're able to get down to brass tacks, uh, that they will come to the table and be prepared to do what's right. OK. I fly American Airlines quite a bit and I have never been on a fully on a, a plane that wasn't completely full, yeah. where I hear it being. So the people I'm with always turn to me and say, Jim, I've got to buy this stock. This I've never been on American Airlines that wasn't totally full. What do you say to those people that give them the stocks down 50 <laughs> percent? They should buy the stock. <laughs> <laughs> but why? Yeah. You know, you know, because there's labor issues, yeah, there's competition. Exactly. Look, people we, don't see the full picture when they look at that full plane. Yeah, and, and, and what people paid to be on the plane. Right. Uh, in some case, you know, it's, a, it's an incredibly intensive, competitive business. Uh, you know, a lot the fares are, in many cases, um, you know, if, if the entire airplane was full of the lowest fare, we wouldn't come close to covering the cost of the travel. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's competitive and it's, our, it's a tough business. That's OK. We're OK with that. But it, it feels a lot better of late. Um, and demand for air travel is really high uh, and strong and continues to be. So we feel very good about the future. I think finally on this call, I'm starting to hear you're catching up. Digitization, you're starting to catch up to the rest of the world in terms of what companies have done with technology, right? Yeah, I mean, again, 
we, we have we have a lot of a lot of uh, initiatives going forward, right. um, and, in, and in some sense, you're right. We're catching up with the rest of the world. When you when you integrate two airlines, uh, it, yeah. it, it, it sets you back on your technology because we got to take two systems and make them one. Um, so we had to integrate, not innovate, uh, was the unfortunate phrase we had to keep saying to ourselves during that period. Now we're back to where we can innovate, and we have a phenomenal team who does a, who's doing that incredibly well, and we're making changes um, almost every month. There's a new innovation coming out of our team uh, that this helps our customers and helps our airlines. Uh, like many people in the country, I've made my Thanksgiving plans and I've made uh, my Christmas plans, some include American Airlines. Thanks. Uh, is, uh, is it because things are robust, it's already too late for a lot of people? Where are we? What, what's that? Well, I mean, how big, you guys are really busy already, right? No, no, yeah. You're booked your book solid for a lot of flights already, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Of course. Um, yeah. Because the uh, consumer's good. Precisely. I mean, the, the demand is really strong. It's always strong over the holidays, of course. Right. Um, but it's demand is strong in, in, through all periods, through through all regions for the most part. Um, not, everything that we that we can see, anyway, our, our, our horizon in that. Great. People don't purchase their tickets, you know, particularly far in advance. But, you know, we're, we're also a leading indicator. And all we're seeing is in, increasing demand for, our, for travel. All right. So in, in time with, let's just talk about the Boeing situation. One, are you going to say, do your pilots want massive retraining on the new plans? Our pilots are, are heavily involved okay. in this process with the FAA and Boeing. Um, and, of course, they're gonna, we're going to make certain they will make certain. And there's, okay. no, there's no American Airlines pilot who's not going to fly an airplane if they don't feel adequately trained. So, of course, they will be adequately trained. Okay. And then my, my wife, Lisa, asked me to ask you this. Yes. She said, ask Doug whether he would be willing to put Gwen, Jackson, Luke, and Eliza on a max. Plane. Absolutely. Um, and they'd be happy to go with me. So, look, it, tell me, because people are saying, listen, I don't know, I don't want to be on this, but why were you happy to put your, your kids and your wife on that plane? If an American Airlines pilot has decided it's okay for, for he or she to take that plane up, I'm okay to go. Uh, we have the best pilots in the world. Uh, they, they, they understand the aircraft that they're going to fly. They'll never take up an airplane that they don't think is entirely safe. Um, and once they are to that position, which will mean, by the way, that the FAA, uh, which right. is the arbiter of safety throughout the world, um, and, is, and is taking this obviously incredibly seriously. So the FAA will have certified it, and an American Airlines pilot will have decided that it's safe for he or she to pilot. We're on. That's the first time I felt good about this. First time. All right. Thank you. Okay, that's Doug Parker, Chairman and CEO of American Airlines. This stock's right. We have money's back after the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.